All right, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be talking about arithmetic increasing annuities. So previously we looked at how to calculate the present value and future value of annuities whose payments form a geometric progression, but now we wanna look at how to calculate annuities whose payments form an arithmetic progression. And so a geometric progression is formed when our payments increase or decrease by a particular rate or percent, and we represented that with the letter R, and we would multiply our payment amount by the same value of one plus R to some power, right? So if we had a payment of 100, and we increased it by some rate R every period, we would have that first payment of 100, and then we would multiply it by one plus R for the second payment, and then it would increase by another factor of one plus r, and so we'd multiply that 100 by one plus r squared, and this would continue on until our final payment, right? And so if you're not familiar with this geometric progression or geometric annuities, feel free to check out our previous lesson where we talk about geometric annuities. But essentially the bottom line is that a geometric progression involved multiplying our payment amount by the same value of one plus r to a certain power, but an arithmetic progression is formed when our payments increase or decrease by the same amount via addition or subtraction of that same value. And so in this video, we're just going to focus on the addition of the same value because we're gonna be looking at increasing arithmetic annuities. We're going to look at the decreasing arithmetic annuities in the next lesson. But for an example of an increasing arithmetic annuity, let's say we started with a payment of 100 and then we increased it by 100 for the next period. So our next payment would be 200. And then let's say we increased it again by 100, our next payment would be 300. And we could continue on to 400, and this would go on forever until our last payment, right? So for each payment, we are adding $100. This is an example of where our payments form an arithmetic progression. They are increasing by the same amount each time. And so in order to calculate the present value or the future value of an arithmetic annuity with these series of payments, let's consider a simpler series of payments, such as a payment of one that is going to increase by one every period. So we'd have one and then two, and then we'd pay three and then four and so on, right? In this case, each of our payments is increasing by $1 each period. This is going to be the simplest form of an arithmetic annuity and analyzing this series of payments is going to allow us to find a nice formula that we can use for other arithmetic increasing annuities. And so let's take a look at how we're going to calculate that next. Okay, so here we have a timeline for that scenario that we just discussed. We are starting at time equals zero, but then we make our first payment of $1 at time equals one. And then at time equals two, we make another payment, but we increase it by $1. So now we're paying $2. And then at time equals three, another year later, we increase our payment by another dollar. And so we're paying $3. And this is going to continue on until sometime in the future, t equals n, where we will be paying an n amount, right? And so let's look at the present value of these series of payments. We would say that the present value is equal to that first payment of $1, one, times the present value factor to the first power, right? The present value is valued at time equals zero. And so we need to bring that payment back to the valuation date. And so we multiply it by the present value factor to the first power. And then for a second payment of two at year two, we will have plus two times the present value factor squared because this payment, we want to bring it back to the valuation date, which is going to be two years from where that payment is made. And so then we'll add our third payment where we have three times the present value factor to the third power because this payment needs to be brought back three years or three payment periods to be at the valuation date. And then we would continue adding up all the way until we have n times the present value factor to the power of n. And that would be for this payment right here, right? And so this would be our series of payments for an arithmetic increasing annuity. And so we actually have a notation for this, which I'll introduce here real quick. We will have that capital I A, and then we'll put parentheses around that for an N number of payments and then bracket with an interest rate I is equal to V plus two times V squared plus three times V cubed. And then we will add up until we have N times the present value factor to the power of N. Right, so what this notation means is that we have an increasing arithmetic annuity, and then we have A, which lets you know that we're looking at the present value, and then we have this N for the number of payments in that annuity, and of course the interest rate that is being used to calculate the present value of that annuity. And so while this is the formula that we can use, 
we would like to have a more closed form of these terms or an easier formula that we can use. And so in order to find that, we're going to need to do some equation manipulation. Some of it might not initially make sense, but you'll see why it's necessary when we get to that nice final formula. And so when we work with this formula, it's gonna be a little bit annoying to have to write all of these letters to represent the present value of this increasing annuity. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to let this be equal to S and then we will work with that from there. And so let me show you what I mean. If we clean up our work here, we will have that S is equal to V plus two times V squared plus three times V cubed. And then we will continue to add up until N times V to the power of N. And then what we're going to do to manipulate this equation and find a closed formula, I'm going to create a second equation. And our second equation is going to be S multiplied by one plus I, right? So we're just bringing these series of payments forward by one year, right? We're multiplying it by the accumulation factor to the first power. And so before we do that, I'm actually going to rewrite what these present value factors are equal to. I think that's going to help you visualize what is happening here. And so this is the same formula that we have up here. And so I'm going to change this and let me show you what I mean. We're gonna have one divided by one plus the interest rate, right? That is what the present value factor is equal to. And so then if we do that for the rest of our present value factors, that means we'll have plus two times one divided by one plus I squared, and then plus three times one divided by one plus I cubed. And then we will continue to add up until we have n times one divided by one plus i to the power of n, right? So this is just another way of writing these series of terms, but we have our present value factor rewritten to be what it is actually equal to in terms of i, our interest rate. And so then if we go through with multiplying the accumulation factor one plus i to the first power, we will have that this is equal to one plus i divided by one plus i plus two times one plus i divided by one plus i squared plus three times one plus i divided by one plus i cubed. And then we will add up until our final term of n times one plus i divided by one plus i to the power of n, right? So all we did there was multiply each of these terms by that accumulation factor of one plus i. And so now notice what happens here. The denominator of each of these terms is going to be reduced by one factor, right? We have one plus i in the numerator and one plus i in the denominator. So this is going to reduce to one. This one plus i up here is going to cancel out with one of the one plus i's down here. So this would just be one plus i to the first power. And then this one plus i would cancel out with one of these. So we'd have one plus i to the second power. And then for our last term, one of these one plus i terms would be gone. And so we would have one divided by one plus i to the power of n minus one. And so if we simplify, we will have that s times one plus i is equal to one plus two times one divided by one plus i plus three times one divided by one plus i squared. And then we will add up to our last term of n times one divided by one plus i to the power of n minus one. And so if we rewrite these to be back in their present value factor form of V, we will have that S of one plus I is equal to one plus two times V to the first power plus three times V squared. And then we will add up to our last term of N times V to the power of N minus one. And so now we have a nice expression of S times an accumulation factor. And so let's clean up our work here a little bit. And now I want you to look at these two equations we have. We have S and then we have S times one plus I, which is that same value of S, but brought forward one year. And so what I'm going to do now is we're going to subtract this first equation of S from our second new equation of S times one plus I. So what we're going to have here is S times one plus I minus S. And so watch what this will be equal to. First, let's rewrite these terms back into their present value form, right? We're gonna have what we have up here, which is V plus two times V squared plus three times V cubed, and then all the way up to N times V to the power of N. What we're going to do is subtract each of these terms from each of these terms. And so if we do that, we have no constants here to subtract from one. So one is gonna be the same, but then we will subtract this V from two V, right? So two V minus V would be just V. And then we will subtract two V squared 
from 3v squared, and so we're just gonna be left with plus v squared, and then that would continue to happen for the rest of our terms, right? We would just be left with plus v cubed, and that would continue on until our last term of v to the power of n minus one. Right before this last term in our original equation for s, there would be a term where we'd have the present value factor to the power of n minus one. Whatever that term is would line up with this term and would leave you with just v to the power of n minus one. Each of these terms here now just has a coefficient of one. But notice that this term right here, n times v to the power of n, didn't have a matching term in this equation. And so we actually have one more term here that we need to remember to subtract, and that is this term right here. And so we'll have minus n times v to the power of n. All right, and so if we look at our terms here, if we ignore this last term, and we put parentheses around the other terms, what does this series of values represent here? What can we rewrite these values to be? Well, this would actually be a geometric series of our present value factor from zero to n minus one, right? And so this is a little bit weird because, well, we're working with an arithmetic annuity here. Why did a geometric series just show up within this calculation? That's a bit odd. And so while that seems weird, we can still use a geometric series to simplify this expression and find that closed form for the present value of an arithmetic increasing annuity. And we're almost there. You're gonna see how that's going to happen because what we're also going to do is simplify this side of the equation, not just this side. Notice that we have this s times one plus i minus s. We can distribute this s through this quantity and something interesting is going to happen here. We'll have s plus s times i, and then we still have to remember to subtract this s, and so we'll have minus s, and that is still equal to this geometric series as well as this last term. And then notice that this negative s and this s would cancel out because positive s and negative s would just become zero. And so we just have that s times i is equal to this geometric series minus this final term. And so let's rewrite this into the notation for a geometric series. We will have the sum from k equals zero to n minus one of the present value factor to the power of k. And we're gonna have that minus n times v to the power of n. You do not wanna forget that last term. It's still important. And so if we clean up our work here, we can rewrite this by just having that s times i is equal to this geometric series minus this term. So we'll have s times i is equal to the sum from k equals zero to n minus one of the present value factor to the power of k minus n times v to the power of n. And so our end goal here is going to be to solve for s, right? We set s equal to the present value of an arithmetic increasing annuity. And so that's what we want to solve for to get our closed formula. But before we can do that, we have to do one more thing, and that is to simplify this geometric series by using the sum formula for that geometric series. And so we know that if you have a sum from k equals zero to some value n, of some value r to the power of k, that is equal to one minus r to the power of n plus one divided by one minus r. And so if we use this for this series, we will have that s times i is equal to one minus v to the power of n minus one plus one, right? We have r to the power of n plus one, where that n comes from your upper bound of your sum. And so in this case, we have v to the power of n minus one, but then you need to add one to that power. So we have n minus one plus one, and that will be divided by one minus v. And then don't forget to subtract n times v to the power of n, right? So now we have the sum of this series right here. And then we can simplify this by noticing that this negative one and this positive one will cancel out. And so we can just erase those. And now we have one minus v to the power of n divided by one minus v. And so now the question is, do you recognize this expression right here? This expression is actually the formula that we used to find the present value of an annuity due. This right here is A with two dots and N with that bracket and I, right? This is that notation we used to represent the calculation of the present value of an annuity due, which is this right here. And so what we can do is rewrite that and we'll have that S times I is equal to that a with two dots with an n number of payments and an interest rate i minus n times v to the power of n. And then we only have one more step now. If we wanna solve for s, the present value of an arithmetic increasing annuity, 
we just need to divide both sides by i. And so if we clean up our work here, we will have that s is equal to that notation minus n times v to the power of n divided by i. And so now we can replace s with what we set it equal to. We said that s was equal to this notation. We have capital I and then a, these parentheses, and then the number of payments n and our interest rate. And now that is equal to that notation of a double dot, and then we have n bracket i minus n times v to the power of n divided by i. This is the present value of an arithmetic increasing annuity. We have now found the close formula to represent that calculation. And so we could go through a similar process to find the future value formula for an arithmetic increasing annuity. And we could also do it for the present value and future value formulas for an annuity due that has an arithmetic progression, right? This formula right here is for an annuity immediate. I don't think I mentioned that until now, but this is the version of the formula for an annuity immediate that has an arithmetic progression that is increasing. But we could also find formulas for an annuity due scenario. And so instead of going through all of that work, it is sufficient enough to see how we get to this formula because all the rest of the formulas can actually be found using this formula we just found. And so let me show you what I mean by that. Okay, so here I have all of the formulas for arithmetic increasing annuities. In this column, we have our formulas for an annuity immediate. And in this column, we have our formulas for an annuity due. And then we have our rows where this row is the present value formulas and this row is the future value formulas. Now we only derive this formula right here, right? This is the one that we just found, the present value of an annuity immediate for an arithmetic increasing annuity. And so if we wanted to know the future value for an annuity immediate scenario, all we'd have to do is multiply this formula by one plus i to the power of n. And if you did that, you would find that it would become this nice formula right here. And so if you're interested in seeing that work, I'll put it up on the screen here for a little bit and you can pause the video if you wanna look at it. But if you go through and you multiply by one plus i to the power of n, you will get the formula that we have right here. All right, and so then if you wanna find the annuity due formulas, all you have to do is change your denominator, right? This was the same case for our regular level payment annuity formulas between annuity immediate and annuity due. The only difference was the denominator of the formula. In this case for annuity due, it's one minus V, or you could think about it as being D, the equivalent discount rate for the scenario, right? So to go from this annuity immediate formula for the present value scenario to an annuity due, we just change the denominator from i to one minus v. And then that would be the same for the future value scenario. We would take this formula and change the denominator from i to one minus v. And note that you could also take this annuity due formula for the present value and multiply that by one plus i to the power of n and you would get this formula as well. So they're all connected, they're all related to that formula that we derived in this video. And so really, if you're just looking to memorize formulas, you really only need to memorize one formula because you can find the other three by just changing the denominator or multiplying by one plus i to the power of n. You don't really even need to know this formula right here. You can just multiply this quantity by this and not simplify anything and just calculate as normal. All right, and so with that, that's all I had for this lesson on arithmetic increasing annuities. If you wanna see example problems where we use these formulas, feel free to check out our examples video that I will have linked at the end of this video, as well as in the description below. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments, but if you don't have any questions, this is all I have for now. So I will see you next time.